Now he's just facing the clock. He throws down all of his archers to the left side. As soon as the ki the queen is tanking that arch tower on that far left, he drops in that balloon. That speeds him up a little bit more here. Wizard working over by the world champion. The queen steps into this last building. It's down this one right here. After a wild group stages, we are finally into the playoffs of the Maverick Cup. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We have Strut taking on NCM or P51M as their name on the website says. We have a queen charge into Lalo, starting off for Exbepis. Looks like he's gonna push his king to go in. Look at the look at the random wall there, like hiding behind the arch tower. See the opening right there? I don't think most people would recognize that there was an opening right there to drive the king in. But he's able to spot it. Gets the king to go in to that opening while the queen is going to move along the bottom of here. He's got a queen charge where champion goes in after the eagle artillery and she'll get the poison tower to trigger and throw her as well. We got super miners on defense here. Super miners are gonna pop while he's actually fighting off the king under the phoenix. So his queen will not be threatened by super miners dealing some heavy damage to her. The yetis are going to get hit by the super miners. They're going to throw a bunch of yeti mites there and that multi stays standing. That's a little bit of a problem. He throws his RC shield. He's got a couple more Yeti Mites in the area. He'll get the Expo down. Does he still have a Diggy? More Yeti Mites to throw into the Warden. But this multi stays standing in the core of the base. And that could potentially be a problem. Our champion gets stalled up there as she meets her end up in that top compartment. And now he needs to obviously reach the Town Hall with the Queen. A wall breaks over on the right side into that Spell Tower. Or does, look at the wall breaks. What are the wall breaks doing here? Okay, okay, he's got, okay, there we go. Wall breaks, carry him through. <laughs> All right, we're back in action. Uh, I, was a little, I was getting worried there for a second, but that is alleviated now as he now continues his push to the town hall. I'm still worried about that multi in front of though. He'll start in the Lalo on the left side of the base here. The multi is not damaging up the healers right now, so that's good. And it's still a very low HP, so we could like, have even like maybe even one balloon to go after it. A little red air bombs hitting the queen's healers, but they're still Holding on to good HP. Queen pops her ability and she will secure the town hall takedown. Oh, balloons so are gonna split off to that multi now. Warden can take the shot at it. Warden takes it out and gets these balloons back in action right away without having to pass into that area. You know, red air bombs can go off as they move into that very troublesome potential area. Another freeze as he makes his final approach. He frees up the expo, frees up the geared up arch tower. More with the last balloon, I guess I should say, coming to the other side of the base here. 40 seconds to close it out. Queen still moving strong. Warden supporting. He's going to lose to Warden here, though. His healers are down to low HP, but they are still pumping out some healing and they will not be overwhelmed. It is going to be a triple. And <laughs> am able to pull through. That was scary. There was a lot of things that felt like they were going to cause that attack to fail but ultimately in the end he pulls through and they start off strong against strut rigo torres coming in for the next attack here the open attack i guess i should say for strut he's going to be charging in with a electro titan smash now he has been quite consistent with this attack here now the biggest thing is we need to have the warden take out the expo here and so we can use the lightning around the corner wait is he not doing a water walk okay <laughs> forget everything i just said rigo torres not gonna follow traditions on this one not gonna follow our typical setup he will go ahead and activate the town hall throws in I don't, know, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> he's gonna, oh, these healers. He's healers, he's healers, he's healers, he's healers. Oh, uh, why did he wait so long on that? He throws down the Flame Flinger now. The Town Hall is activated, which he did need to activate it. But making such a close pass is getting all of his healers killed. Oh, Rigo. Oh, Rigo Torres. Rigo. <laughs> he oh, he screwed the pooch on that one, didn't he? Able to gather whatever percentage he can around the outside of the base here. He climbs it all the way up above 80% here. All things considered, that is not bad. That's not bad. Oh, there we go. Electro Titan out of the Flame Flinger. Takes out a couple more buildings there on the right side. 85%. Still a decent percentage for how poorly things ended up going. Yeah, but he, you try to pair the Earthquake with Lightning to 
hit the town hall and get it activated while it's going after his other targets. That way the flamethrower can lock onto the town hall and take it down. But you need to make sure that your healers are clear before you do so. And obviously they weren't. I don't know if he meant the, for the queen to go the other direction. I don't know what was supposed to happen there, but it definitely went very, very wrong. Now we have Psyduke with super archers and electro titans. Now here's an attack that I, I still, for the life of me, can't get it to work myself. <laughs> I've tried. I've tried and I've tried and I've tried. But these guys have been breaking out the super archers. And they can do it a lot better than me. Let's see if he can make it happen here as he pushes the warden in. Is he trying to go all the way to the multi-inferno? He might be. Notice how he's not parrying this one with lightning. He has a blimp selected at the moment. He already drops the jump up top there. The warden goes all the way in. Deals with the entire Tesla farm. The rage will get him through the multi inferno, and then he can be make his way in. He'll pick up the Tesla. Want this uh, mortar as well? Doesn't necessarily need to take the mortar there. The queen can reach over the wall here. He's going to be fine, and he finds more Teslas there. That's perfect. Super archers can reach over the wall. Notice how big the funnel is here for the super archers. You don't want any leaking off to the other side moving off to the left there you want to make sure that they go in he sends in the blimp to sail over the top here now there is an invisibility tower by the town hall he'll go ahead and freeze that invisible invisibility tower he rages the town hall takedown the yetis inside of the rage and with that invisibility supporting are able to secure the town hall takedown get that expo as well yes he can okay good value with that yeti bomb right there that was worth it now everybody else continues across the top he does have this monolith that is gonna be a problem Super Archers are starting to lock onto it now. They're going to deal with it, but they may get distracted over to the Royal Champion and bail off of it for a second. They do lock onto it again as the Royal Champion goes down. Up the top, his own Royal Champion starting to sweep through the trash up there. He needs to get some cleanup down to follow that up. He gets a Wizard up there to start working and a minion to start working up. And uh, Electro Titan is leaking out over there, so that will go and deal with a lot of the outside cleanup there. But the Monolith stays standing in the core. How is this Monolith still standing? Those Super Archers that were in the area had all day to work on that. The RC ability finally takes it down, but the RC is not going to have enough punch here to go finish off the base. So now the question is, with this one, with most of everything going the way that it was supposed to, can it, hit, can it get above the percentage that Rigo Torres did when everything went wrong? Right now, it's questionable whether he can get that high. But he's got an archer working on the left side of the base there. Wizard's still moving. The headhunter not going to be able to do anything, so we can't use that for cleanup and go directly to the king. Guys, he's gonna he's gonna miss the percentage here, isn't he? All right. Well, you know what? Overall, Rigo Torres has a net positive. It is an eighty-two percent. So if Surat is able to get the triple now. They will take the lead. Surratt will send in Hugo Stiglitz next. He tries the wall break over on this left side, but the wall breaker could not find a target. It just attacks the walls on the very outside of the base. That's kind of interesting. Like, like there's no enclosed compartments. No, impar no compartment is even close to enclosed enough to make anything wall, break wall breakable anywhere in that section of the base. So interesting base building here from Side Duke now on defense. The queen will at least be able to cut the wall around the corner a little bit tighter and go directly into the multi inferno. Town hall is not activated to take advantage of the rage tower here, so just the expo. He loses the unicorn to the raged up multi inferno, though. Okay. Fetching some red air bombs as he moves in. We'll lock out the town hall shortly, but he may go north and then loop into it. It's fine. The sweepers will... That sweeper is actually going to help him out a lot here. Like, it is reducing the overall amount of healing that the queen is receiving. He just needs to get the healers to go inside of the rage here so they can surge back forward quickly. But it's going to make so that the healers are not going to get hit by the town hall here. It's correcting the angle of approach here. So Hugo, whether he planned it or not, is going to take full advantage of that. But wait, the headhunters! Queen, don't chase him. Don't, okay, she got him down. Are the healers safe? Healers are safe. And the Lava Hound is delayed. And I don't know what delayed it there. <laughs> the, the, 
It started to run south there for a minute, and it did let the queen take the town hall down before she switched over to the hound, so that works out great. Our champion and warden working at the bottom here with the hybrid. Well, the king forms full on the outside of the base there with that siege barracks. Did a great job out there. Got the defensive king out of the way here. Now the hogs are releasing. We'll go in and support the eagle artillery. This multi-infernal side here does stay standing. But at least the hogs and the miners are keeping their distance from it. And maybe the queen can go deal with it a little bit later. Queen goes invisible because her healers were getting tired. Good pay attention to both sides of the base here. They engage the defensive world champion inside the minimum range of the scattershot while he fights off the world champion. Headhunter sneak in there as well. And he was able to secure it. Now the world champion would love to pick up these healers right now. He has her ability, the Diggy getting the stuns, but she'll be forced to ability right there. Unfortunately, her ability does hit that very low HP cannon that was right there, but the Queen, remember, the walls were all open on this base here. So now that the defenses are thinned out, the Queen has clean access to walk right back out of the other side of the base, and now he's just facing the clock. He throws down all of his archers to the left side. As soon as the ki the queen is taking that arch tower on that far left, he drops in that balloon. That speeds him up a little bit more here. Wizard working over by the world champion. The queen steps into this last building. It's down this one right here. He's got it! Hugo picks it up. A triple on the buzzer and Strat will take the lead by three buildings. That was close, but he got it. Barely, barely pulls it through. It had that lead within their grasp but gives it up here and will send in stay to go in with a queen charge into Lalo using a golem and a battle drill to support here a lot of people are opting to go in with battle drill rather than stone slammer for these Lalo attacks and it's kind of interesting the battle drill gets the stuns and it typically stays a little bit safer it doesn't take any black air bombs but the downside is if you have a lot of ground expos on the base, then it could pick up a lot of additional defense. Also, you gotta watch out for the defensive king. You gotta watch out for cannons. So it's just a variation of targeting that potentially would make it a little bit weaker than a stone slammer. But a stone slammer okay, gets shot down pretty quickly when it hits a couple of black air bombs. Speaking of black air bombs, we have one going on for the healer right there. Lost one. Needed a cocoa loot out in front. There goes another black air bomb. It's trapped up here around the town hall. You go able to get the team in the lead here. Let's see if he can get it done on defense now. He gets the town hall down. As that invisibility tower goes off right after it drops, he puts in the battle drill to the right side to work with the world champion. Okay, this is a better use of the battle drill. Not really specifically paired with the Lalo, but paired with the royal champion and the golem to move in as a strike squad to go in there and work together. He's getting stuns off of the diggy. He's getting stuns off of that battle drill. So tons of the damage that would be coming in at them is being shut down. And now the battle drill opens up. He's got rocket boons to surge out and go after the monolith. They all surge directly into it and they do take it down. However, the royal champion was already claimed there by it. So not in time to save her. Rage up on the left side here as he goes into that scatter shot. Able to get the scatter shot down. Freeze up at the multi inferno. A lot of blue, not a lot of blue surviving with that initial pack, but reinforced with more up in the top corner. Into that air defense we go. Multi inferno is ripping him to shreds up there. He does get the air defense down. Queen is going to get stuck on walls here. He's got the eagle artillery still activated, and it is firing down on him. The world champion, I think, was in charge of. Going in there and getting that eagle down. The queen will get overwhelmed. She lost too many healers there to sustain. And he will just try to gather up whatever percentage he can here. It is a miss. And now, we pass it back over to Strut. Remember that as they went into this exchange, they had a three building advantage. So with this one coming at 89%, the lead will be maintained by Strut if they hit at least an 87%. Let's get one more here. Okay, make that 88. Make that 88. 87 to time. Mask is in for Strunt. He's got sneaky goblins. Maybe enough to get a funnel, but not enough to secure the town hall takedown. Unless he clears out these storages in the town hall compartment with something else. But he'll go ahead and put in his king from the top corner of the base there. The queen will go in at the right-hand corner, and with skeleton spells, giving them the protection that they need, the queen will be supported with the healers here, and I assume he'll want to put the royal champion into the top of the base there to support the king. But he does go ahead and send in the log launcher to go take out the poison tower, to take out the eagle artillery, 
and take out that single inferno it's splitting the base exactly down the middle the queen is taking the defenses on one side the king is taking the defenses on the other the log launcher makes contact with the eagle artillery it'll take out all the buildings behind it was able to get it down there so it opens up he does have yetis popping out there the yetis will save the electro titan right there the electro titan will work on the defensive cc we should be able to burn through those rocket balloons there hopefully it survives that exchange and will take out the lava hound it doesn't rocket balloon was able to win that unfortunate would have been nice to have the poison right there we might have been able to get the electro titan to just straight up take out the lava hound so now i have to fight it with the queen which Electro Titan is a little bit better at handling these Lava Puffs here to instantly burn them up and save him a lot of time, so the Queen will be delayed. That's going to cost him a few seconds here to get this Queen moving towards this Molten Inferno again. Remember, he already used his Siege Machine, but he did not use his Warden, so he can Lalo through the Town Hall. Okay, Queen was chasing after the defensive Queen for a minute as she goes invisible. Rage is up to get this Inferno down before it loses too much HP on the healers, and a nice adjustment there. Able to adapt. It was an ideal, but he handled it just fine. The Royal Champion goes into the other Molten Inferno. The Lalo will go in for the left side. He has a Lava Hound in a good tanking anchor position right there, but he will need the remainder of his freezes to assist with the Town Hall takedown. The first freeze will come down onto the Invisibility Tower. Invisibility Tower got hit there, but it didn't trigger. He freezes one more time, rages at the Town Hall, and is able to one-shot it. He needs to get the model down before it goes invisible. Okay, that's a little bit of a problem here. He's gonna have that pick and wait for a little bit longer. He lost his queen. Where are the healers going? They're going up to the wizard up at the top here. He lost his world champion at some point in the mix there. He gets into the scatter shot into the air defense. Warden needs to support in the air defense takedown. Bloons are clumping heavy to the right side, and the air defense continues to chip away. It takes the warden down. The bloons drop out of the sky there, and the queen ability was not enough to carry her through to carry that section of the base. The warden goes down the queen is down but he does have this wizard that'll try to pick up a little bit more able to fight off a little bit and it is going to be a little bit of a wizard walk to get a little bit more a little bit more percentage up in that area and that'll climb him all the way up to 91 percent here for mask a little bit of chaos at the end not able to pull through it is going to be a percentage advantage maintained by strut but this war remains very close with a four building advantage now crane charge into hog miner hybrid moving in next yetis will form the funnel here going out to the air defense making so the queen will not round north into the expo compartment but that doesn't stop the expo from shooting away at the queen into the defensive king headhunter will get him through that without having to burn any spells and his first rage will come down he's got three rages total now have two heal spells for the actual hybrid. So very cookie cutter, traditional green charge hog miner hybrid approach here. Gets in a hog and a balloon to go pick up this geared up archer tower. Able to get down almost exactly. The hogs will now pass up the queen and will pull the CC, but only a partial pull there. A couple of archers come out. There's another hog, but it goes off to the cannon instead of the expos. So he will have the defensive CC still standing as he makes his way forward. Puts in the hybrid in for the bottom. The king over to the left side there with the siege barracks. And they're going to push the queen forward here. Rocket Boots go with the queen here. Keep an eye on her. Queen. Okay, she goes to ability. That was a manual ability, not an auto ability. A better safe than sorry right there. I think he needs to go to ability regardless. Or go invisible. I guess that would have been an option. But he also would like to have the CC hang out there where the queen is working. So there's another wall break to get the queen to move through. There goes the invisibility. He's still got a ward ability. He'll pop it now as he has lots of incoming multi-inferno damage coming at him. Maybe watch for a regroup into the hogs here. They're grouped up nicely right there as he goes into the eagle artillery. And there's the heal spell right in that perfect spot there. Catching a lot of value out of that. We'll get that multi-inferno down before he takes too much damage at it. But the scatter shot is able to defend right there. And the scatter shot. Now the queen is going to take out that entire pack. Everybody will come in from the left side. Will still be a good HP. Something on the outside to go pick up this cannon. I kill a lot of his cleanup over there. A little bit of a problem. Queen still moving strong. RC able to get through the defensive queen right there, but she goes down in the process. A couple miners are still alive. 
But down to the ward of the queen now to finish the job. The queen's gonna get stuck on a wall here. She'll go after the scatter shot. She'll at a minimum tank the scatter shot and give the warden an opportunity to keep on working on the cleanup here. He has his cannon up at the top of the base here. It's the only defense that the queen is not tanking, but queen is slowly getting overwhelmed here. She steps her way through out of the storage. Wait, he's got a P.E.K.K.A. here. He's got a P.E.K.K.A. P.E.K.K.A. picks up the tanking. But the warden's gonna have to finish off the base. I think he's gonna fall barely short. He has enough force here. The queen needed to survive. She does not. He doesn't have enough cleanup at the top here to deal with the cannon regardless. It is a defense, 95%. But they keep the percentage high as we pass it back over to Strut. Super Bowlers. Now with the bar set very high here. 95% on that one. We'll need this one to be a 91% or higher to keep Strut either in a tie or higher. They'll get in the lead. Philip is going to be going in opposite of the town hall here. Super Bowlers excel at coming in completely opposite of the town hall. Is that where he's going to enter, though? He's got this Yeti working on the right side. He's got... The Warden trimming out the top corner, so he could reasonably go right through the defensive queen here. But he's also got the funnel formed on the left side with the Flame Flingers, so like, he's got options. What's the play here? I think he wants the Warden to actually take the Scattershot down. Now, he didn't pair this with Lightning, which is typically the case when we do Super Bullers. We tend to use Lightning with the Electro Titan attacks there because remember Rages, for example, do not boost the aura damage of Electro Titan. So you're more using Rages on attack like that to boost the healing output of the healers. However, Bowlers in general do absolutely amazing under a Rage. So it's worth the longer Warden Walk without the Lightning to have the additional Rages to push the Super Bullers through. Flame Flinger doing a great job on the side there, but it's going to engage these Mortars now. And it's going to start to take damage. It will open up over there in just a moment. But the main force is moving in. He'll get the town hall secured. Like Titan Super Bowlers get into that area with the rage. The ward will be active. Getting some nice bounces through the core here. The major on the backside is getting hit and taken down though. A little small lighter defenses. He's got the jump. He does side swipe that town hall. And the healers and the super bowlers are not going to the town hall poison, which is great. There's some nice bounces off of the inferno. Get some damage onto the backside scatter shot. Getting the bounces through the CC onto the monolith is a big deal, but he does need to deal with that area around the monolith. The king right there, the Tessa farm right there. That is going to be a very difficult area for his royal champion, for example, to move through. He does get in some headhunters onto the left side there and was able to get the defensive royal champion out of the way. So this royal champion will now make her final approach. Getting that monolith stunned up there. Warden supporting. He in, goes into the defensive king. This king's going to really hurt this road champion. He's got ground skellies popping on him as well. The ground skellies are going to go to the headhunter. But the headhunter and the freeze are able to get the road champion through. Perfectly managed right there. He's got an RC ability. King is wrapping around. And Philip will not only get them the percentage advantage maintained but they will get another triple on the board well done on that one but now let's go into the final set of attacks here M is going to need to triple to respond to this huge pickup from philip if they end up missing this next one the chances for victory will slip through their fingers armello Moving in with a queen charge into Flame Flinger Lalo, charging the queen directly at the town hall here. I have a lot of expo fire sustained for quite a while, but the queen able to keep that expo fire off of the Flame Flinger on the left side of the base. Now there is a mortar out there, and you'll have to deal with it as that Flame Flinger goes into the scatter shot. But the scatter shot would be the primary target there for the Flame Flinger. Also, if he goes invisible, the Expo could transfer over to the Flame Flinger as well. Luckily, it's just outside of the range of it. A little bit of a dangerous position to be in right there, but has to freeze the Town Hall to stop that incoming damage onto the healers here. The Queen is very low. Needs to pop her ability. She'll get the Expo, but the Expo goes over to the Flame Flinger, and he even has the Yeti over there. Okay, okay. A little bit of a mismanagement there. Loses the Queen Charge. Loses the Flame Flinger. And Carmelo's in trouble now. That's not a good time for that to happen. That's not a good time for this, guys. He throws down the Royal Champion down south with the King. Working with the Headhunter. Able to power through the defensive Queen down there into the scatter shot. Super 
Miners on defense here are gonna pop onto his king. Let's see if they hit the world champion as well. I don't know exactly what the range on them is. Does that avoid? Oh, that hurts. Oh, that was a big blow to the world champion right there. And then Eagle Artillery strikes on top of that. She will not survive. It looks like Ast is gonna pull through with the defense on this one. And now we'll pass it over to Strut to close out the war. Don't take any risk. Don't throw right now. 81. <laughs> War to get moving. War to stay safe. War to climbs a little bit higher. The high seeds, the top four seeds, which would be Badzinger, Navi, Destroyers, and HTM, got to skip this first round. All the eight teams that were the lower seeds have to play through. And we'll see who ultimately makes it out. But right now, it's looking like Strut is going to claim one of those positions, which would make their next opponent... The Badzinger, and Badzinger's been putting up either 13 or 14 stars in a lot of their wars recently, so Strut needs to prepare for that, and they need to hopefully get out here and put up 13 stars on this one here, and show that they can match those big scores themselves. Ast will be in charge of it, as he is getting ready to- oh my god. <laughs> I told you. I told you. I told you. Why do we do this every single time when the war is on the verge of being locked in? They decide to come out here and attack completely opposite of the town hall. This is worse than going in with a smash attack of the same exact layout into an anti two star base. He's coming in from the complete opposite side and he has to path correctly, otherwise. He could potentially throw the war. Tesla's popping up into the area down south where he used the lightning. And the queen could technically reach over the wall and breach that. But the witches cannot. Log launcher gets opened up and he's got a jump to carry him past the core compartment and into the town hall compartment. But over the right side, he needs the support of the world champion to go and get the scatter shot down. Can't reach with anybody else here. Yet he's moved forward off of the out of the drop of the flame thingy here. We also fight off the defensive CC. Still has a raw champion standing down south. Fraction of HP for her, but he puts in a couple of hogs. And he does need to send in the flame thingy now. Maybe the hogs can just do it on, on their own. Maybe they can't. I don't know. But he needs to secure the town takedown. <laughs> okay, moment of truth here. The final approach to the town hall. The town hall goes invisible. And that single photo will continue to chip away. Town Hall is activated on percentage now. The Phoenix and the Hogs up at the right side are able to handle that scatter shot. The World Champion comes to the bottom. There is the Town Hall takedown. Ass pulls through, but now can he get the triple of the RC ability? RC clears out everything on the left side of the base here. Super Witches still have the healers. The healers are sitting outside the Town Hall Poison. Queen is still moving strong. Just needs to beat the clock now, and he will put up 13 stars, which will definitely be competitive against their next opponent, which is going to be Badzinger. So, does he have enough time here? I, I think he does, right? He just needs to get over to this gold storage here. Got a lot of wizards working down there. This wizards would be nice if I split. They hit a small bomb over there. Okay, <laughs> it's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. Everybody across and back through. Everybody in on this last. There goes a small that's gonna cost him time! Oh, rip the dream! 99%! It's a good thing that they didn't need a triple there to lock in the win because he comes barely short there. Small bombs, kill us, clean up. And it's still open. It's okay. It's okay. So, looking forward, like I said, the next opponent is gonna be Bad Singer. And then they win that. Then it's gonna be one of these three teams, either VN. Imperium Titans, or if any world champions, Navi.